Um, so if I start off, um, if you can't hear me, um, let me know via the chat. Um, but it'd be also good if you just send a message and let me know um, where you're from and who's watching just before we get started. So while people are writing, um, the ZeroBS CRM product demo is going to um, just run through generally the core CRM and a couple of extensions. Um, so, and then really it's up to you guys and girls, if there's anything that you particularly want me to cover, um, just let me know via the chat. Um, it's only me today, um, so I'll do my best to answer any chat and questions as I go through the demo. Um, so hi Frank, Frank from Mexico. Um, John from Adelaide and Destiny so far from Arkansas. Welcome. Um, so again, if there's any questions, there's a questions tab. Um, hi Peter from Sweden. Uh, there's a questions tab at the top and if you ask your questions there, then I'll hop on and answer them and it'll be a nice little um, area there where you'll be able to see what other people have asked as well and it keeps the chat a little bit cleaner. And okay, so I've got the CRM loaded on a fresh install of WordPress. So as you can see, it sits alongside WordPress, alongside the rest of your website. Um, so I've created um, a lot of demo data here. So it's imported random names and random people. Um, so they're not real people and they're not really real numbers. So the CRM here, you've got your dashboard, you've got your contacts. Um, I've set it up so you can use quotes and invoices and then also manage transactions. Um, so I've imported this from a demo Stripe account. So Stripe Sync is one of our extensions that will bring the data in. And it just shows you a rough dashboard of what it can show at a glance. So how many contacts you've got, how many leads. So I've added a single lead, um, how many customers, because everybody that's in the CRM right now um, had purchased um, because it's imported from Stripe charges and then how many transactions. So people are purchasing more than once. So there's 622 and there's been 1500 transactions. And then generally your sales funnel, so how many of your leads are you converting into customers? Um, because I've not really got lead generation set up on this demo, then it won't make too much sense because it's like I'm converting almost everybody. And other areas are just any recent activity from your activity logs. So it'll show you like a transaction has been added, certain people have been created, and then if you add activity logs, which I'll show you later, um, that can, well, and will show up there as well. Um, so that's the dashboard at a glance, and you can control um, what is shown on the dashboard. So you can say, well, if you're not bothered about these four boxes, you can just turn them off, and then it'll look a little bit different for you. Or if you don't want your two charts, you can turn those off and just put your set ones back. So it's customizable um, depending on what you want to see there. Um, so that's the dashboard and then it leads into other areas of the CRM. So this sort of is showing, I've added these four years ago um, as latest contacts. So it's a little bit backwards because my demo um, data jumbles all the dates up. Um, so just ignore those for now, but in your CRM, it will show these as the latest contacts. Um, so I'll just check if there's any questions so far. So no questions so far, so I will carry on. And okay, so then adding a contact is super straightforward. And if you've been using the CRM for a while, um, then you'll be familiar with this. You can just choose your status. Um, so I'll add another lead. You can choose whether they're Mr. or Mrs. Um, I'll add myself. You can add in the email. And then you have space for social profiles if you have that for the contacts. So you can add in social profile and then you can add, add any tags. So this is me and then save. So this will give you me as a contact and now I'm in the CRM. And what I mentioned before was, so that says created Mr. Mike Star. And then going back to the dashboard, you'll be able to see that it's created me here in the activity, but I'm also here as a lead. And it's now showing an hour ago. Um, that's because my time settings are not allowing for British summertime. So it's in the WordPress settings. If you see that that's happening, 
then you need to look and say in your settings um i'm not i'm not gmt because at the moment now there's an hour difference there um, so if it, if you're seeing any differences to your local time you need to make sure that you're choosing the correct time zone in your list of wordpress um, so back to the contacts so i've added myself as a contact there and you can then manage this contact through the crm so jumping back in uh, you've got your contact actions you can add a quote you can add an invoice you can add a transaction and you can add a log so if you want to add a note to this contact you can say mike is living an hour behind um, the time settings for mike so this is something you can add to the crm so then you see that fix up the time settings it gives you an idea then again back on the dashboard you'll be able to see that there's been a note added recently on mike so anybody that's looking at this central dashboard can see what's been going on in the recent activity um, but it, well, it's also shown on the contact page as well if you're looking at contacts then you'll see that all the notes are added in this activity and when they were added um, so again, I'm still living an hour behind because of the time zone. Um, so that's the contact page. So you've got all different actions there. If you're, if you're wanting to quote customers, you can do quotes. Um, you can add an invoice if you wanted to make them an invoice to pay, or if you wanted to just log a transaction. So if they're giving you some money or in other means, you can do it via a transaction. So there's an, or you can add tasks. So there's a number of different things here that you can do for each contact. Um, so again, just jumping back. Yeah. So again, shout out if there's anything um, that isn't making sense, or if I'm going too fast through anything. Um, so the contact page. So what I usually do on this um, webinar is I'll say, okay, we're doing a quote for this, for in my CRM. So say you're doing web development work, you've got a web design example, or if you're doing something completely different. So if you're working in um, say the construction industry so let's say i do something slightly different than last time so let's say a roof template a roof tiling roof tiling template so what you can do here is you can write out your um quote template to show you um so concept and then you can have place orders so you can hi there concept for name this is a quote for YZ. Um, and then so you can draft whatever you need to draft as your quote maybe you see the end um, you can put as much detail in there you can put links to various terms and conditions and save that as your tiling template and you can use other um, placeholders so you've got all these like, different placeholders that you can use and then when you go to add a new quote so i can say let's add a quote for me and it's a new roof thousand dollars i'm going to use the template that i've just made so then you can say use the quote builder and then it will populate the quote and then it will fill in the customer details and then it will start to save you the time in making um, your quotes so then you can fill this with any specific information that you might want to for this person but it saves you the time of writing out a new quote each time and putting in their details. Um, yep, so that's the quotes. Go on and make invoices. Um, so you can add your logo if you've got a logo. And um, then you can choose the emails and you can say, let's do this way, so roof fitting. And it's one, one, and it's a thousand. So you've done the work and now you're ready to invite your person. So you save, save the invoice. And then you can assign it to contacts so and assign, assign it to me. And then that will show up in the invoice list. So if we go to URL for the invoices, 
you got the invoice there for me. Um, so I've got a lot of other sort of invoices in there already. So you've got an invoice there, a status draft, and then that can be sent to the customer, and then the customer can log on and pay. Um, so that's it's the same. So it can all link together. So contact, quote, invoice, transaction. So when you make a transaction for an invoice, it can then mark that invoice as paid. Um, so that's the CRM if you're using it for quoting, invoicing, and and taking standard payments. So examples like freelancers if you're doing work for clients and you want to put together quotes and then invoice them for the work after it's done and then depending on whether you're collecting manually or using invoicing pro so invoicing pro lets you um, have invoices paid online so you can use paypal or stripe to collect the payments so either paypal or credit card and that's how that would work and it would box off and pay off and automatically do the transaction. So you're just using quotes or just direct draft invoices. Clients can log on and pay and it's all done that way. So that's how it would run for um, that side of the business if you're doing it on a quote and an invoice section. Um, so does anybody have any questions around other particular uses of the CRM? Um, is there any other areas that you'd like to see? If you just let me know via the question tab. I've had a question from John asking, is there a zero integration? Uh, we don't have a zero integration yet. Um, we have a list of uh, proposed integrations. So I will send the link here. Um, so there's a coming soon page here. Where, and this is effectively what people have been asking for in the CRM. So any particular extensions that aren't there already, we add to this list. Um, zero isn't on there yet, but we've had quite a few people ask for QuickBooks. Um, so I'll send the link so you can pull some extensions and enter. Okay. So you can vote on extensions on the coming soon page. And if they're not on that list, like zero isn't, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, so zero is not on the list. So we've got quite a few different, um, you can then submit a new extension request and that'll take you through and you just fill in the form, let us know which extension, and then we keep track of it and we'll add it to the page um, for coming soon where other people can vote on the extension. So Lisa's asked, how does the import work from PayPal? Is there a way to test the import prior to accepting it? Um, so it's it doesn't import it as test, but you can delete the import afterwards um, just by resetting the CRM. So if you've got a new CRM install and you're wanting to import from PayPal, um, you install the extension and then it'll ask you for your PayPal API um, details. So once you get those details, you put them in and then it will, um, it will run you a sync. So let me go and quickly, I don't have my PayPal details to hand. Um, so you could connect, let me just show you on the extensions, give me one second. So if you're using PayPal Sync, you just get the extension. So you download and install the extension from your account and then install it like any other plugin. So I'm just quickly putting this into the plugin folder. Okay, so if you're, if I now go to plugins, you'll see that I've got um, PayPal Sync as an extension. You activate the extension, and then under ZPS settings, it'll give you a PayPal Sync tab. And then you need to enter your PayPal email, API username, API password, signature, and the date of your first transaction. So once those have been inputted, and there's a tab here for PayPal Sync, and then clicking that tab will load the sync and then it'll tell you because i've not put a date in and i've not got any details it will fail um, but it'll just run through all your paypal transactions import the contacts and import the transactions um, but then once it's completed if there's anything that you um, 
don't really like, you can just go and delete them from the CRM. Or if you want to delete everything, uh, we can let you know. There are some like bulk tools. So if you go on transactions, um, you can go on here and say, let's say you can just save and close. So you say I, I wasn't keen on a, these transactions. I can go on and I can tick. And then I can say delete the transactions and then that will delete anything that's imported. Um, so that's how it sort of works when you run running it through PayPal Sync. Um, so Lisa, still, if you've got another question, just let me know. Um, same for anybody else. So extensions, you can vote on through the coming scene page. Um, <laughs> I have millions of transactions. Will it bog down WordPress? Will it impact you? Because what happened? Uh, uh, I once had a developer say I had to archive my transactions, so it only has the last six months. Um, so it should, it'll go through and it does a certain amount and then waits a little, like a second or two. So it's best to run it. Um, and just leave it, it might slow your site down a little bit if you're doing that many. Um, what we have other users doing is they'll have the CRM on like a standalone place and it'll just run and it won't impact the main website if you wanted to do it that way. So it could be either um, a subdomain on or a new domain on different hosting if that's an issue, or you can just do it and run it overnight. Um, so it'll go and um, the way the sync works as well is on the uh, PayPal sync tool, it remembers which day it did last. So you could run it for a little bit, you could do a few days, and then if you're thinking it's slowing things down, you could pause it and then you could start it again um, when it's a little bit quieter. Um, but as for duplicates, it, depending what you've imported into the CRM, um, so it logs the transaction ID of the transaction and then it won't duplicate it if it has a match. Um, so as long as you've got the transactions with the relevant ID, then it won't do a duplication. Um, but I, I had that issue myself. I had transactions going like all the way back to 2010 in my PayPal. So being able to like download the CSVs, it didn't let me go that far back. I could do three years, but through the API, I can go back to the start and it does bring in the transactions that I needed. It takes a bit of time, um, but it, it does a day at a time and then it'll start again. So it will should just keep running and it shouldn't bring the site down too much. But like I said, the best way is just to test and if you're having any issues, let us know. So that's, and we have syncs for uh, WooCommerce as well. So if you're using WooCommerce, then it can sync and you don't need an independent PayPal sync or Stripe sync. So if you're using WooCommerce as your um, e-commerce, then you can just, just use that and it will just sync from WooCommerce. So you can take payments through your WooCommerce store and then have uh, WooSync run and generate all your um, orders and transactions. It will bring your orders as transactions and customers into the CRM. So, and it will keep it up to date depending on the options that you've chosen. Um, does anybody use WooCommerce that's watching? Yeah, so, um, so Peter and Lisa use that, and, and Javier and Frank, so quite a few. <laughs> um, should I show you quickly the options for WooSync as well? Um, it's very similar to the PayPal sync, but if you're using, you don't really need to do both. Um, so it's useful if you were using PayPal before you set up WooCommerce. So for me, I had um, a standalone PayPal, um, Express checkout coded up to a website years ago. So that was before I even started using Woo. So I wanted to capture all of the transactions that I could. Um, but if you're using Woo, then it's a little bit easier. Um, and the syncs links up to your website a little bit better because it can be the same install. Um, so I'll just quickly show you the Woo sync. So again, it's the same type, the same activation ways before. So plugins. And now I put WooSync in, so I deactivate PayPal Sync because I don't need that now. Um, 
So then WooSync, when you activate WooSync, it will load up and it gives you the setup options. So you can say, how are you using WooCommerce? So if you've got WooCommerce on the same website, then it's a lot easier to run. So most of our users tend to have it on the same website. So it's on the same install as your CRM, no setup needed, it runs straight away. If it's an external website, um, then it will, you will need your API data and it can only sync every hour. So depending on which people use, um, just as I thought, I've actually got WooCommerce installed on this, so that's going to complain. Um, I need to add WooCommerce. I put WooCommerce on this install. Again, it'll run the same way. So, so the this is showing you the setup, and then you say, so it's the same website, so you don't need to do anything, you don't need any API information. If you are doing an external website, then it will ask you for the website and your WooCommerce API keys. So, same website, and then you can say, do you want to create invoices? So once it's syncing the orders, it will can also create the invoices. So this is useful if you're running um, a website and people are asking you for invoices for their orders. So I run a WordPress theme and plugin business. So on the side of that, it's selling plugins to customers and I use WooCommerce. And then that is giving me then invoices in their account. So if I get emailed and ask for an invoice for their order, then I can just click download and send it to them. It's a lot easier than having to put one together all the time. And whether you want to use the product index. So if you're making invoices and you need invoicing pro for this, then it will let you choose your WooCommerce products to put on the invoices if you're doing draft invoices. So it's the same thing with Woo. It'll take you to the settings, and then you can say, same website. Do you want to also store the shipping address? Do you want to tag the contact with what they purchased? Um, and then we've got a few other things here. Um, so order mapping is depending on their WooCommerce order, do you want to make a certain status for the customers? So if someone's pending, then they're not a customer yet, they're probably still a lead. If they're refunded, you, are, you might want to mark, mark them differently. So that's, oh, hi Alvaro. Um, so someone's asked another question. Um, is the webinar being recorded and will it be available later? Um, yes, it's being recorded. Um, and we'll be adding it to YouTube as well as to our um, webinar replay page. So there's a webinar replay. So our last one's on there at the moment. Um, so if you want to watch the one that we did before this in June, then um, this is the, I'll send the link in the chat. So that's the webinar replay. So it's on there. Yeah, so it's been recorded and the link to the, the replay will be up on here when it's published. Um, but the one at the moment on that page is the one we did in June. Um, so it just gives you a little bit of information and we add them to our YouTube channel. So once you've watched the video, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, then it will automatically let you know when we do new videos. Um, so I jumped a little bit away from the, the WooSync. Um, yeah, so you can map your order settings, you can get, you can create invoices from WooCommerce orders, you can use the product index. And this is a new feature is if you're running it with, um, if you're wanting to show things on the client portal. So we've got, had users where they have custom fields in the CRM record and they want their customers when logged into WooCommerce to be able to update those fields. So if you're, for example, if you wanted to know their um, dietary preference, then you can have that in the WooCommerce My Account and that'll update your um, your contact record. So to do that, first up, you need to know about the custom fields. So in the CRM, you have, we have custom fields and you can control um, contact custom fields. So you can add in here, um, so food preference. And that 
but I'll add it as a field. So once you save this page, then you'll have a custom field. So if you wanted to show that on the WooCommerce My Account page, then that's what that option could do. You'd put in that into the settings, the food preference slug, and then that will show up on the WooCommerce My Account page for that contact. So it's a way of them being able to go on and fill in, like, are they vegan, are they vegetarian? Um, so that's what it's like, that option in the settings does. Um, so you can do this, you can have in as many different types of custom fields as you want. And then when I was showing statuses, you can change your statuses here as well. And your different other transaction statuses, company statuses, and the types of quick filters, if you want quick filters on your list. So there's, there's quite a few settings in the custom fields area, which you might want to be looking into. So if you wanted to add an extra custom field in address, so if you wanted to also track, uh, I don't know, um, neighborhood, <laughs> then you could also save that in and that will show on your contacts. So again, if you go back to contacts and I look at myself again, then you'll see on the edit contact page, that you've got food preference in there now. So you can log that against contacts, but you've also got neighborhood in the address fields. If you also wanted to store the neighborhood. Um, so if you don't want neighborhood there at the bottom as well, you can then go and say uh, in the settings, and go to your field sorts, and this will let you then order where it sits. So you can say, actually, I quite like it there. And same on the contact fields. If you want food preference to be up near the top, you can change it there as well. So you can just adjust, and you can hide certain ones if you don't want them to show as well. So you can say, actually, I'm not bothered about phone numbers, so let's hide phone numbers. So if you can do various options in field sorts as well. And that just lets you customize um, the CRM a little bit more. So when you go back to your contacts, um, if you're not logging those details, then you don't need to see the farm fields all the time. So again, there's now there's, there's no input for the phone numbers anymore. And then yeah, and then you see neighborhoods moved up and food preferences also moved up. Um, so that's the custom fields area. Um, are there any other questions as I go along? So um, I think it's probably worth me quickly running through what our extensions are. People think up questions. So we have a number of extensions available for the CRM. Um, so this is the list of the extensions that are available. Um, so we have about, I think about 25 now. Um, so we have advanced segments, which is, I've not actually shown you segments yet. So if I jump and show you segments, then I can explain what advanced segments is. So if we go back to um, the CRM, we we'll are to see that there's a segments tab. If you go on, if you go on the segments, if you've not used this before, then it's definitely an area to um, look at. So let's create a segment. So I want to find, let's say, some my customers. Um, no, um, it's just a simple segment, a simple segment. So somebody that's a customer and somebody that has a tag equal to my tag. So a customer tagged with my tag and then you can preview the segment. So this will find one person that matches those conditions and you can add as many conditions as you want to this. And it gives you a way then. So, okay, you've got a segment now called a segment. And then we go to the contact list. So it's people with customer that has a tag my tag. And then you'll be able to see that this is now a segment in the quick filters to be able to then choose and filter those people that match that segment. So that, that'll bring you back. So this is filtered by this segment. So this is useful for if you're doing more fine marketing and it links in with other extensions. So we've got a couple more questions. 
Um, is there a way to import contacts from a CSV? Um, there is. So there's two ways um, to import contacts. So if you go to contacts and import, then if you've not got the extension installed, you can use the CSV um, light importer. So this will give you um, very basic ways of importing it. So there's more in the pro extension if you want to uh, log imports, automatically create com companies, um, use the CSV tagger as well. So if you wanted to tag your um, contacts in bulk, then you could use it via uh, an import file. Um, so you can import generally just this way and export as well you can do. So we have an export, there's two, a couple of different ways to do this. So this is our one of our views that lets you click and export, but then we also have um, data tools um, which lets you export a little bit more um, details. So you can export contacts and you can choose which fields you want to export. So if you only wanted to export ID, first name, last name and email, then you can do that and then it'll export and you can export other objects as well, invoices, quotes, transactions. Um, so it's under tools, data tools, we'll let you, and this should direct you again back to your importer. So if you want to import, or if you want to bulk delete, or if you want to um, export, it's all under the tools and data tools. Um, so I'll just, so that's that one. Um, is there a way to import contacts? Um, yes, it's tools, uh, data tools. Uh, are we able to rename or remove the original fields to match our intake process? Um, it depends what you want to name them to, Destiny. Um, there's generally two ways to do this. One way would be through a translation file. Um, so if you are if you are in the UK, then in the plugin there's a languages folder, or if you're in the States, there's the same thing. Um, so in the plugins you've got um, languages, and then there'll be a what's called a. Uh, you can do it uh, via .mol and .pol files and overwrite the fields. So that's one way. Um, so you can do it by that, uh, overwrite the fields via a translation. Um, the other way would be to um, enter which ones you want to remove. So if you wanted to, you, you could hide, hide, or hide all the fields, <laughs> hide as many fields as many fields as it, as it allows, allows, and add in custom fields named appropriately. Um, but we can discuss this more uh, if you drop us a support ticket, um, just to try and understand what you are looking for exactly. Um, so let me get that link as well. So if you want to submit a ticket, I'll send this link to um, the answer. Okay, um, so it depends really what you want to rename. Um, so there's two options. You can do it via translation. So we have some uh, a translation where, so in the UK we call it county, um, but in I believe Australia and the States it's called um, state. So like which, which sort of state are you living in? So that would be a translation. So you check, convert county to whatever you would call that word in um, where you're from. So you can do that via the translation file or you could log state as an additional address field and hide the county one would be the other one, but it's probably better to think, is it just language or is it specifically you need more fields or are there other fields which you want to change um, in itself? So back to the extensions I was just running through. So the advanced segments, so that gives you a way of, it gives you more conditions. So you can have um, more detail in there of the various conditions. So you can do it from any fields. So you could say, um, you can use any contact field. So you could say custom field was, let me just segment all the vegans that have filled in vegan and send them a special offer for um, a salad or something like that. So that would be one way. Um, so advanced segments lets you do that. So you can do whichever other custom fields. Um, are people in postal code X? Are 
guy who's named Dave in state who haven't spent more than 100. So there's different ways you can do advanced segments to help target your um, marketing. And then we have a couple of um, email marketing tools. So we've got Aweber, MailChimp and ConvertKit at the moment, and then our own mail campaigns. Um, so these three link into external services and let you um, send your contacts to their lists, and then you manage them by those three systems if you use any of those. Or we have our own mail campaigns, which is um, getting close to an, a newer version, which has a lot more um, detail in there. So if you're interested in um, testing out the next edition of the mail campaigns, if you, again, submit as a ticket and just let us know, um, we'll be also reaching out to some other people as well that have expressed interest in the new features. So if you're keen on seeing version two, um, drop us an email and we will add you to the list for the beta of that new version. So that's, we have further email campaigns. We have a couple of others like automations, which is a useful one if you've not seen it. So this give, so you can then say, it's a way of automating things in the CRM as the name suggests. So if you have a new contact come into the CRM and it has a condition, so it's a status of a lead or it has a certain tag, then you can choose an action. So you maybe you want to email the admin of the site to say, oh, this VIP person has emailed in. Uh, not emailed in, so he has been added. So he's filled in this form. He'll email you, or you can have it send you a text. Um, so you can set it up to text you every time you get a new order, for example, if you use our Twilio extension. So there's different um, automation triggers and conditions. And then you can then say, okay, I want to send an email. So you can send an email to the site admin. You can send it to um, the contact themselves. So if they filled in a form, you could send them an automatic email using automations. And then we have some, the start of some automation recipes where it'd be something like delete contacts or in 30 days is one. So these are things that run regularly and can help manage your CRM for you. So that's all in the automations. Um, other extensions worth touching on is, so we have Twilio, um, which will allow you to send SMSs via the automations or via a direct um, link on their profile. If they've got a mobile, you can click a little phone icon and send them a text. Um, and then various other sort of the syncs that we talked about. We had Stripe Sync, um, WooCommerce, and PayPal. Um, sales Dashboard, I haven't shown you. That's probably one of my favorite ones if you're selling things to the CRM. So you can go and once you've imported all your data, it can show you all the the information about that data. So it'll show you your gross revenue, net revenue, discounts, average revenue per customer, um, what refunds you've had, how many contacts you've had, and how it's growing since the same time last month. And then uh, you get, what type of failed payments are you getting? Um, so the other thing, um, you can also make it full screen there. So I would do that. It just lets you see a little bit more detail. So you can look at these and you can change the dates. So you can say, let's have a look at the latest month. And then it goes away and calculates all of this information. Or you can look at the last or the prior month before September and it'll do the same thing. And it gives you recent activity. So what are people buying? Um, and how is that working in the CRM? So what type of fees are you getting? Um, what's your average revenue? How many contacts have you added that month versus the month before? Um, so it's a very useful one if you're selling um, or syncing something like WooCommerce. Um, oh, so Luke says there's no sound. Um, I'm not sure on that one. Um, so Frank says, can we see a little taste of the next version too? Um, is it possible that it will be launched during this year? Um, I do not listen to what you said about this topic. <laughs> Okay, so Mail Campaigns version two, we're probably going to be in beta in a couple of weeks. Um, I was, if you send it, if you submit a ticket to the same link um, and let us know, um, we can provide um, some screens, some screenshots, and also um, set you up with beta access. Um, again, um, that's assuming uh, you already have the current version. So there we go. So I've sent that to there. Um, what have we got? 
Okay, cool. So Luke's now got sound. Um, so we're getting near the end of the webinar. Um, so Sean's asked, is there a way to, you can call from the CRM? Um, there is. So if you go to, again, the settings, tools. Um, I've just turned off all the phone numbers on this, so it's not very useful. Um, so let me put those back. So in custom fields, field sorts, it was, yes, in field sorts. Put the phone numbers back. So if you're calling from the CRM, um, you go to, I believe it's general settings, let me find the right one. And so there's a setting that lets you choose um, to call from the CRM. So here you go, so click to call links. So depending on what you're using, um, if you do click to call or Skype, so if you've got Skype running, then you choose the Skype option. Click to call would be the general cell links. So I've not got Skype open, so it's not going to do anything there. Um, and click to call. So let's try click to call. So you say click to call, and then you go to your contacts. And go back to me. And edit. And if I put a number in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Save. So this should then bring up. So home telephone should be a little, should be, and then we go back to view the contact. There should be a button somewhere to click it. Um, I wonder if it's because I've done a fake number. But yeah, so that's how you do it anyway. You'd add the, the phone numbers into here and then it would then give you a way of, so there should be a little button to click, but if that's not showing up, just let us know and I'll look into that because I don't know whether it's the fact that I've used a fake number there. Um, but yeah, so it should show a little button next to the phone number to click to call. And that will, if you've chosen Skype, it'll use Skype. Otherwise, it will use whatever you've got set up on your computer. And um, so, some people that have like linked up PBXs, I believe it works through that. Um, so that's should be covered there. Any other questions? And um, so, with so, can the core and extensions be translated into Spanish with local? Okay, so we had a Spanish translation actually done um, not too long ago for the CRM, um, but WordPress um, has actually moved their translations to. Uh, one second, let me find the right page first before I. So they moved their translations, and so we've written a guide about how to translate. Let's see, yeah, it's CRM. How do I, how, how I do? How do I translate? Translating the OBS, so I'll send this link. So they've moved to a new page now of translations, and you'll see here that this has got all the different languages that you could translate the plugin into. Um, we do have a, um, a Spanish translation already, so I'll upload it to this page. But so Spain is showing nothing at the moment if it's um, Espanol. Um, but I cannot actually upload the one we've already got and then so there should already be one in there and then it's finding so the issue with the WordPress translations is the translation editors so I think it's it doesn't seem the easiest to be able to be approved as an editor so you've got people that can edit the translations so people that could effectively go in you can do that as a translation contributor for that language um, but then it needs to be approved so it'll be sitting waiting so if I go back to the list, you'll see that we've got a number of various languages that are in waiting. So with German, so people have made a start, but they've not actually managed to get an editor for that project yet. So this is relatively new with WordPress. So we do have um, various translations in the past for the plugin, but it doesn't cover all the strings. So definitely um, you should be able to translate it through that. And um, you can, uh, learn more. So you can learn more here. I'll send you the link. Translate it. Um, 
So Javier said, what about triggers? Are you going to implement a couple of them more? Can I delete or change the status of a customer that is not filling all the registration info? Um, I'm not sure what you mean about uh, more triggers. So things like, uh, so at the moment we've got triggers for new contacts. We'll be adding additional ones like a status change. So if there's been a status change from lead to from like A to B, so from lead to customer, um, then then that will be something that we'll be adding. Um, so we're maintaining like a list. So we've got a lot of um, actions in the plugin already in the automations. Um, Any like actions that would trigger like that. So if there's been a tag that's been added, or um, just go to the automation. So if there's certain things that trigger things in the CRM, like a new tag or a tags added or updated, then we'll be adding those as triggers to the automations. And also again, like any of the other features, if there's anything that you um, want adding, or I think should be added, just let us know via the support ticket link. Um, and then we can add it to the list of things that we've added to that extension. Um, but we will be adding additional triggers. It's just deciding which ones are worth adding. So we've done the main ones, like if there's a new contact, a new quote, a new invoice, um, but we'll be adding ones like a contact is updated. But the thing with having a contact updated one is if someone's updating the contacts like every day by adding a log or adding notes, then it's going to fire a lot of times. So it could be a little, and if you're sending emails on every trigger, then it can get a little bit uh, over the top if you do too many, uh, if you're triggering on actions on too many things. Um, but yeah, we are definitely open to adding new ones. Um, so please let us know. Now, which you like. You're welcome. And um, so that's that's triggers. Um, so yeah, uh, are there any other questions? Um, so the other things I wanted to touch on. So I was running through the uh, extensions. So the pricing, if you're not already a customer. Um, so the course free and it'll always be always be free. But if you do want any of the extensions I've spoke about, um, you can view them by the pricing page. And we're adding extensions all the time. So as mentioned before, so we've recently added Agment, advanced segments in Aweber and member mouse, and we've we've got all the existing ones in there. Um, I think I touched on all of them. Um, oh, so we've got the, the farm connectors. So if you're using Gravity Farms or Contact Farm. And then you can use these connectors to get leads into your CRM. So if you had a request a quote page and you're using a contact form or a gravity form, then you can have those go into your CRM. And then on the back of that, using automations, you can have it trigger various um, actions. Um, yep, yeah, so that's those ones. So the pricing right now is we're still running our version two pricing until we launch version three. And um, so we're still on the discounted down from 499 to 199. Um, and then we also have the reseller package if anybody is uh, looking to partner with us and resell the CRM to their clients. Um, so again, and if anybody does who hasn't purchased already um, and wants to purchase today, we can also, we also have a theme available. And this is for anybody that attends the webinar. Um, we will be launching this, this theme, which is linked to work with Zobia CRM. So it's got, um, integrations with the farms, it's got the client portal integration as well. So if you're, and it's just started a little bit nicer, so it's an option if you want the theme. And these contact farms, for example, can be linked directly up to the CRM. So it's just, it's designed with the CRM in mind. So it's our first theme. And we'll be launching this officially towards the end of the year, but it is available for anybody that wants it. Um, so again, if you let us know, I can, we can sort out a special pre-launch offer there. And um, just either uh, post a little um, comment and we'll let you know. Hi Kurt, have you only just arrived? <laughs> um, so I was in Canada and I uh, actually met up with Kurt for lunch. So it's good to see you on here and, and Sean. Okay, so uh, the people that do you want the theme? Just drop us a note, and um, so that we're looking to launch it at around one two nine. Um, but the pre the pre offer will be fifty nine if anyone's interested, and it will be a per annum um, subscription if you want continued updates and support. So just again, I will 
I will contact the people that have expressed interest and I will sort that out for you. Okay, cool. Um, are there any other questions? I've covered everything else. Yep, so I've covered most areas now of the CRM. And this webinar will be um, released on the YouTube channel as soon as we processed it. <laughs> What's your favorite question? Okay. Um, so Sean, if you create a new log without saving the contact first, the log will be lost. Yes, it will. Um, so it does need to, um, it does need to save the contact first. Um, we, we'll put something in, I'll make a note to warn about that. Um, so even if you, so if you create the contacts, add the log and then press save, it doesn't save the log. Okay. Um, I did answer that question, Kurt. So this, the mail campaigns, we're, oh, the beta will be ready in two weeks. So uh, Woody's already sent through some screenshots and he's now working pretty, pretty much full time on it. So it will be d definitely out, ready to test on the beta testing in a week or two. And if it's not, then you can give him a whack with a stick from me. <laughs> so that's definitely should be there in the next uh, week or two. Um, as I mentioned before, um, if you've got the first version and you want to see some uh, screenshots of the second version, um, we can send those through as well. Just submit a ticket and let us know. It does look good. There's some more screenshots as well now, Kurt, as well, available. Um, just showing the, uh, it's the start of the reports, um, but it should be ready to test. I've not, I've not, it's not even letting me test it yet. So this is, I'll be getting it at the same time as um, the other people in the beta. So it's quite, um, it's a cutting edge piece of kit. Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, so I'll send through, um, how, how do you help us? <laughs> You're helping us just by attending and asking questions and if there's anything that you do spot with the CRM so any bugs or any feature requests just let us know and we um, we as you see I actually didn't show you this um, but we release a new version every week um, I'll try to as best as we can every week so there's an update and I've lost the page um, so there's we do an update every week of the CRM and so this this page that I can share in the chat show you what we've been adding and how many we've been at type of updates we've been adding and fixing um so we, we're slowly getting towards the next version um so we're currently on version 2.9 point, uh, 6.1 so as soon as we get to version 3 that will mark the new the new version and that will be when we have the new version of mail campaign so there's been a lot of prep if you look in, into the change log about mail campaigns v2 prep and if you go to my earlier logs as well, you'll see there's different bits of prep. So there's quite a lot of um, core work needed around this, um, the mail campaigns version two. And then we're fixing little bugs along the way as well. So the best thing is just to let us know um, if, if you're seeing any issues or if there's anything that doesn't quite look like it's working right and we'll fix it up. Okay, cool. Um, so I'll hang around and answer any other questions for the next few minutes. And I'll be in touch with anybody that wants details about the theme ahead of the launch towards the end of the year. Okay, I'll hide myself now. Um, thanks for attending everybody and asking the questions. And I'll be here for a few. Oh, has Sean got another question? Oh, did you just not want me to hide myself? <laughs> Can you link to outside farms? Um, how do you mean? So depending on which farms you mean, so you can either do it via the API. Um, so I've not actually shown anybody the API. Let me see if I can find the link. So this is the old link. So we've got an API, so if you're wanting to connect it 
um, there is an API to be able to connect and create customers. So whatever your form is doing, as long as you send it um, a JSON post bag of this information, then it can log it into the CRM and then it will respond with the data back to you to say it was a success. Um, so, but if there are any other specific form providers um, that you want us to, uh, okay. Hmm. So, an ex so you, people are filling in an, an Excel spreadsheet, which then you want to get them into a CRM. Yeah, if we, yeah, take that offline. <laughs> but depending on what, because you can do um, VBA in Excel to potentially do that sort of thing, but I'm not sure whether that will work the same. And I don't know whether it's Google Sheets or just standalone Excel. Um, but yeah, we'll take that one offline. But if you do need to extend the CRM, we do have the API as well, which covers um, a lot of the endpoints already. So creating a customer, viewing customers, searching customers, um, things like, so various things we don't have there yet, like quotes that we'll be adding soon. So you can get the quotes. Um, and things like deleting customers aren't quite in there yet. So we're still developing this, and this is also in the lead up to version three, that once we've developed all of the API, so there's different areas to cover. Um, okay, so yeah, we'll pick that up offline, and then, so I'll keep asking your questions, and I'm going to hide, try and hide myself. I don't think I can, uh, there we go. So hopefully you can still hear me. Um, but I can now itch that itch that I had behind my ear for the last hour. <laughs> so if there's any other questions, then just let me know. I'll keep this open for a few more minutes. And if you've not subscribed to the YouTube channel, um, then you can get it via the webinar replay link. So I'll post that into the chat as well. I think I posted it higher up actually. Um, I can't find the link in right now. Um, so connecting the farm field to the website. Is this, if this is Excel again, if we just pick this up on on the Slack channel. Um, so we've also got a, if you're using Gravity Farms, Sean, you can just use the connector or the API connector and that automatically does Gravity Farms. Um, but we've also got a Slack community. Um, so if you're not in the community already, then we hung out there. And so I'll send the link to that as well in the chat. So if you want to hop on there, you can join the community and join in on Slack. And when we're online, we'll generally be in the community. So if you want to go on and ask questions or have any particular, like you want to just log a bug through, through Slack because it's a bit quicker than filling in a farm, um, then that's generally fine. Um, if it's quite a detailed bug, then we do ask you to fill in the su submit a ticket because then we can like log it properly in our system and make sure that we're going back. But the community is a good one just to join the other people that are using the CRM and see us ask, ask questions and anything like that. Okay, I'm going to end the webinar, and I, I, I'm not sure whether the chat will stay open. Um, thanks, everyone, and we'll be, we will be doing more uh, live webinars as well, including specific ones on certain products. So we're going to do one on the new mail campaigns as well, like a more of a detailed um, go through. This is quite a lot to cover if we're trying to cover the CRM and all the extensions just in the hour. Um, so it's good to have certain detail and for example the PayPal sync one again with extensions like that it's quite difficult to show a demo while also being um, data compliant because it would be importing real data um, so that's why we tend to not have demos of those because if people put their own details in then they accidentally leave their own data um, so we 
but doing like like I've done today, showing you how it may, how it's set up, how it works, how it imports. We'll be looking at different webinars that can cover um, things like that. So, okay, thanks everyone. I'm going to end the webinar, and if you're if you want to keep up to date, um, I keep remembering links that I should be sharing. Um, then we have a keep up to date form, and if you fill in this form, then it will. I'll, I'll send an email out about future webinars so you likely to already be on that list um, but if you're not sign up and we'll let you know when we do any product updates so we do a product update each month which tells you what, what we've added to the crm in the month um, and then we'll be also to say we've added a new extension our mail campaigns is coming up and also it lets you know about any future webinars that we'll be running okay thanks everyone and hopefully see you all soon <laughs>